and gentlemen, my next guest tonight is an historian and leading anti-racist scholar. He's just written two new books, How to Raise an Anti-Racist and Good Night Racism. Please welcome back to The Late Show, Ibram X. Kendi! <laughs> It's a pleasure to be. First time we've seen each other in person because the last time we talked was at the height of COVID, and it was uh, almost two years ago this week, uh, June 25th, 2020, and we were talking about uh, how to be an anti-racist at the time, your, your book at the time, and also about the ongoing protests in the street following the death of George Floyd. So I, I want to get into how you see the United States and how you see progress two years later, but, but first I want to talk about your new books. Here we go. This is a book for an adult called How to Raise an Anti-Racist and a book for children called Good Night Racism. <laughs> now, uh, the nice thing is, is that the audio book of the children's book here is actually uh, read by your daughter. Right there. Imani. What's that like? What's, what, for, what's that like to, uh, you know, listen to your daughter reading your work? I mean, it was just unspeakable. I mean, it was incredible, I think, especially because she had been actually doing speech therapy. Oh, really? And so to see her and to see her confidence and see how proud of Mm -hmm. uh, herself that she was. I mean, it was just, I mean, it was nothing like it. Now, it almost didn't happen because her grandparents negotiated hard for her. And, oh, she has representation. Oh, you know, she definitely has representation. Anything in her rider, like no red M&Ms or something like that? So I literally have to put a gift under her pillow, like, every night now. <laughs> for how long? She, 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 like, was, like, eternity, but, you know, I'm trying to figure out a way to stop it. <laughs> Depends on how long it stays on the bestseller list. Exactly. That's what it is? Well, uh, okay, remind us, uh, what is the difference between anti-racism as opposed to being just not racist? Well, to be anti-racist is to recognize the racial groups as equals, is to challenge policies that are leading to inequity and injustice, and to really seek to deconstruct racism and create equity and justice for all. So it's active as opposed to a passive response. <laughs> exactly. exactly. Even you say that you were reluctant to talk to your daughter about racism. What, well, what changed for you? What, what made you change your mind, other than, you know, all the racism? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, first, research. I mean, you know, I think the more that I research this topic, the, the, the more that I realize that the very people who are the most vulnerable to racism are the very people who are the least likely to engage about it, our children. And so it's actually protective to engage them. It's protective for a child to learn there's nothing wrong with them because of the color of their skin, or there's nothing special about them because of the color of their skin. It's protective when our kids are crossing the streets of the world, that we teach them to look both ways, to identify things that can hit them and harm them. And, and certainly, these messages can hit them and harm them. One of the arguments you hear um, in opposition to talking to uh, young children or to teaching elementary level school children about racism or the history of racism in America the ar argument goes something along the lines of, well, you're going to make white kids feel bad about being white. What, what is your response to that? Well, I, I would say those people are most concerned about our teaching of slavery. So let's just talk about slavery. Sure. If we teach white kids uh, about slavery, we're going to teach them that there were white people who enslaved people and there were black people who were enslaved. And we're also going to teach them that there were white people and black people who challenged and fought against slavery. And, and so my question back to them would, would be, why can't we allow white children to identify with white abolitionists? And... Mm -hmm. 
And, you know, and also it, it demonstrates to me that these folks recognize that kids are not colorblind <laughs> uh, and that how we shape the curriculum impacts our children. So then why aren't they concerned about how black kids feel when they're not represented in the curriculum? I, I want to talk about another one of your books, which is uh, Anti-Racist Baby, okay? And Katanja Brown Jackson was sworn in today as the first black female Supreme Court justice. And your name, your name up, came up earlier this year in the confirmation hearings for Ju Justice Jackson, who was sworn in today. This is what, ha what happened. Um, Ted Cruz talked to her about a, a, a curriculum of a school that she was on the board of that included in their library and some of their teachings one of your books, or some of your books, one of which being Anti-Racist Baby. What was it like seeing your work being used that way, sort of, sort of misused as a cudgel for political purposes in a Supreme Court confirmation hearing? I, I think it was very difficult for me at first because I just didn't know what impact it, it would have on her actual confirmation, so the fact that... That maybe you wouldn't want to do anything that could possibly hurt the chances. Exactly, right? I mean, I... And, and so the fact that, sh that... that Justice Jackson was, of course, sworn in today, um, you know, is certainly... Uh, I'm just excited about it, as that everyone else is probably even more excited about because of what happened. But what, it, what, what I also thought about is that, like, literally... I, I can... Sus I suspect that... Senator Cruz didn't read How to Be an Anti-Racist. It's a couple hundred pages. Um, <laughs> but... <laughs> I'm guessing... But, I'm guessing holding this up is not one of the things you do to be an anti-racist. No. And I would just hope... OK, if you're not going to read the adult book, can you at least read the, the, the children's book before you attack it? <laughs> When, when we spoke uh, two years ago, you told me, quote, America has stage four metastatic racism, but I still believe that the American people can fight against the odds and still heal itself. Have you seen any progress since then? And what are you paying attention to particularly going forward? So in certain ways, there are people particularly at the local level, at the state level, who are building anti-racist organizations, who are uh, pushing for equitable policies. They're largely behind the scenes of history. And, but on the other hand, <laughs> you know, <laughs> in the mainstream of history, we, you can make a case that things have even gotten worse. Because at least in 2020, we were discussing things like ensuring that everyone can vote Easily, At least we were discussing, imagining an America where nobody was kill killed by the police. But, but now, we're not even <laughs> talking about that, at, you know, at a national level. But, but, but behind the scenes, right, in local areas, people are organizing and people are fighting and, and people are striving to create an inequitable and just world. And so that's what I'm looking for. And I'm constantly looking for, are we changing policy? Who's getting into positions of power? And are these policies and powerful people committed to equity and justice? Well, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. His books, How to Raise an Anti-Racist and Good Night Racism, are on sale now. Ibram X. Kendi, everybody. We'll be right back.